This video demonstrates the recommended method to complete the final assembly of Apex. Cable preparation lengths for Apex vary by cable and application. Refer to the written instructions or Apex cable length table located at aflglobal.com forward slash Apex. The recommended tools for the Apex closure are basic cable tools and a can wrench, plus all locally required safety equipment. Once all splicing has been completed and all fibers or tubes are secured in the basket, perform a final inspection of the Apex closure prior to sealing it. Ensure fibers or tubes are retained in each tray. Make sure all splices are secure and fibers are not bent or pinched in each tray. Ensure all fibers or tubes are retained in the basket. Make sure fibers are not pinched or tubes are not kinked and the basket is clear to lower splice trays. Lower the splice trays into place. Make sure all wedges are secured in all ports and ports with no cables have port plugs installed. Ensure the small diameter bushings have been installed on cable less than one half inch. Ensure all gel compression screws are fully engaged. This includes ports that have port plugs and do not have cable. Once Apex has been inspected, slide the two Velcro straps in the basket slot. Velcro should be installed with the hook side away or exposed from the splice tray at the loop. Secure both Velcro straps. If less than six trays, the side strap should be fastened first. Identify the location of the alignment tab on the base. It is on top with the basket at rest on the bench. Use this tab to identify the orientation of the basket when strand mounting Apex. When preparing to seal Apex, confirm there is no dirt or debris on the O-ring or sealing base. Rotate dome to match the alignment tab and slowly install dome. Inspect dome to base mating so that there is no interference causing gaps between the dome and base. Prior to installing the locking ring, locate the mounting insert. This insert is used to attach to the pole or wall mount bracket kit. It is also used to identify basket orientation when strand mounting. Install locking ring, but make sure not to put latch or hinge assembly to interfere with the mount insert. Compress the locking ring and engage latch. Fold latch over and engage the lock pin. With Apex or any sealed closure, a flash test should be performed. This flash test will pressurize the Apex closure to 5 PSI with a pump or compressor to the air valve at the top of the dome. Do not exceed 5 PSI. This is done to ensure the seal of Apex. Inspect port seals, wedge seals, and outer ring by spraying with soapy water using bubbles as trace indicators. If no bubbles are present, continue with the installation. If bubbles are present, release pressure at the air valve. Remove the apex locking ring by pulling the locking ring handle to disengage the locking tab from the ring. Once disengaged, continue pulling the locking ring handle to open the locking ring clamp. The locking ring can then be easily removed from the apex closure. Install closure into stand if available. Completely loosen the gel compression screw. The sealing wedge will stop the gel compression screw once it reaches its full relaxed position. If it has not properly engaged, remove the sealing wedge and store it in a safe, clean place. Completely release the gel compression screw. If the gel compression screw unthreads from the sealing wedge, simply reinsert the screw and thread it back into place prior to unlatching the sealing wedge. Inspect and confirm that the hose clamp is in the correct location and the clamp tail does not interfere with the sealing wedge. 
Cable attachment unit is properly installed and secure. Cable is in place to be secured by gel and it is not out of the gel cable channel. Grounded cable does not interfere with the cable ground if applicable. Ground of the adjacent port cable does not interfere. Repeat assembly and retest. If a ceiling wedge needs to be removed to allow access to the cable and cable attachment unit, completely loosen the gel compression screw. The ceiling wedge will stop the gel compression screw once it reaches its full relaxed position. If the gel compression screw unthreads from the ceiling wedge, simply reinsert the screw and thread it back in place prior to unlatching the ceiling wedge. Depress the locking tab and slide the ceiling wedge down toward the bottom of the base to release the latch. Slowly rotate the top of the ceiling wedge from the base and expose the cable with cable attachment unit retention. Depress the base gel and elongate the ceiling gel as shown each time a ceiling wedge is removed. Set aside ceiling wedge in a clean location. Remove the cable attachment unit and address cable.